Bonsai Dream. Dream. Bonsai Dream. exciting uh, 2021 uh, I decided to talk about the story of this uh, beautiful mugo pine from my collection the tree is called the mammoth for the evident uh, kind of uh, shape uh, of uh, the beautiful deadwood uh, I had this tree with me for almost uh, 15 years uh, the tree was uh, collected uh, in the Alps uh, and uh, originally it was uh, laying down uh, in a rock so this part uh, was uh, completely up that's the reason why along the many centuries uh, the snow the avalanches uh, and the rocks uh, create uh, this beautiful dead wood uh, it's a very powerful tree with a lot of character so originally took me some years to be able to lift uh, the tree almost 90 degrees uh, up uh, to have uh, the front uh, here facing the observer for the new shape uh, and uh, I start developing a lot of foliage. Mugo uh, originally after collection need a uh, lot of years to establish uh, especially when uh, you work uh, with trees that are extremely old they need time uh, to redevelop a lot of fine roots, uh, the, to acclimatize uh, in the new envi environment uh, and to produce a lot of fine roots uh, to be able to create foliage. So when I style uh, this tree probably was around uh, uh, 2011 or 2012 uh, uh, I was able to lift it up, as I said, and uh, to give a briefly first uh, styling, uh, moving down some branches, and especially for the back, uh, I had to rebuild completely the back because uh, there was no branches here. All the branches were growing in this direction for the original position of the tree developing nature. So I start pushing down branches, developing, developing, and uh, finally arrived in 2018 uh, and I was able to show this tree at the EBA UBI Congress. UBI is the Italian National, Asso National Association and EBA is the European Books Association. So it uh, uh, was May uh, 2018 uh, I showed this tree and uh, uh, I was happy enough, uh, happy and lucky enough to receive uh, uh, the EBA the Prize uh, and a UBI Mansion of Merit for the tree. But uh, I wasn't still happy 100% about the shape of the tree. The lower part uh, uh, looked kind of weak. I didn't have a proper first pad. Uh, uh, there were too much uh, of a negative space, uh, so that was visually competing with uh, the extremely big uh, amount of energy that the trunk of the tree has. So, since uh, uh, that exhibition, I let the tree grow free in my garden for two seasons, just normal maintenance, because I have uh, in mind to restyle the tree completely. Uh, I had to touch the dead wood and uh, to restyle the tree also to show more the dead wood. So I, the idea was to move the branches away from the front, uh, because originally they were covering too much this uh, beautiful focal point. And now finally I took uh, uh, the chance uh, of uh, the lockdown for Christmas time, bring the tree into the workshop and together with uh, my students, uh, William and uh, uh, Ferdinando, we clean the tree, we start working at the dead wood and we reshape the tree completely. 
especially the work on the dead wood was uh, the more complicated and longer one. The dead wood of the Mugo, if you follow my channel, you see I did already a previous video about uh, dead wood and Mugo pine. The wood of the Mugo is very soft, so especially the dead wood doesn't list uh, so long, especially inside. So originally this was uh, completely full, but in time, because this part uh, is sitting inside of the pot, always uh, get moister every time you know you water the tree get moisture from the soil plus uh, you know I will live in the middle of the mountain so we have a kind of rain so the wood stay moister so the wood start rotting inside so when I bring the tree in the workshop I start digging in the central part that was looking kind of soft and weak and I discovered that completely inside of the tree the wood was uh, rotting. Luckily, because that uh, did the most of the work for me, because uh, I was feeling the wood was too aggressive, too full. And now, with this uh, hollow part uh, and a lot of detail by the connection we was able to create uh, with the work of the dead wood we did, uh, we did a little bit of work with uh, you know electrical carving tools, uh, but most of all, a lot of work with the hand carving tool, digging inside, removing the part that was soft, arriving to the wood that was hard. So normally what happened, the wood that is outside, that wood that is outside, always in contact with air and sun, is able time to kind of breathe, so, you know, accept the moisture and release the moisture, so it doesn't rot easily. But obviously the wood inside doesn't have this chance of getting dry after getting wet, so it stays wet longer, and that's the reason why that wood start uh, rotting. On Mugo pine, there is no way to you know treat the wood uh, in a way that you can list forever. It's almost impossible. The wood inside, you will always uh, lose it uh, on a longer period of time. As I said, since the tree was collected, probably was uh, 18 years ago. So. You know, is the normal process uh, of deterioration of that wood. Now, obviously, I put uh, some uh, wood hardener in the part that are more in contact uh, with uh, the soil and also the inner part. So, hopefully, you know, I can still uh, grow this tree in this form for the next uh, 15 years again. I'm looking forward to this uh, trip with my trees. Uh, I love to develop trees uh, and uh, I love to have them in my collection for a long time. They are part uh, of, uh, you know, uh, my way of doing bonsai, especially this tree. Styling-wise is uh, the typical example of my style. Very compact, very aggressive, a lot of uh, small spaces, not such big spaces. For a tree with a such powerful trunk, uh, this is perfectly what can express my style of doing bonsai. And also, another important thing, as I already mentioned, we are doing a journey with our tree. Only now, you know, nowadays in Europe that, uh, you know, we are kind of, uh, you know, experimenting and developing Yamadori for 20 or more years, uh, we are kind of going through and restyle this uh, old tree along uh, the time uh, and we can really see the trees maturing and we can work with trees that uh, have uh, no big wire on the trees just a uh, fine wire on the smaller branches to really set uh, the paths uh, and this uh, also for myself as a bonsai artist and a bonsai teacher is uh, teaching me a lot uh, about how is the connection you develop with your own trees. For me, my trees uh, uh, are the most important thing for bonsai I have. I was always working to have uh, good material, develop good material, looking around to find the best material to create bonsai art. So the story of this tree can be kind of uh, the parallel of the story as myself, uh, as a bonsai artist. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, very happy to receive uh, this uh, 2021 uh, with uh, this uh, creation. So 
I hope uh, you enjoy this story. I promise I will do more in the future about some of the tree that are part of my collection, talking about the story of the tree and uh, what I did along the years to bring the tree to the actual stage. And Hopefully we see again with this tree in Europe uh, in some exhibition when I will bring it uh, and I hope uh, you will enjoy this tree live. And thank you again for following my YouTube channel. See you at the next.